There we go. Okay, I think we got our audio going there. I think we're good to go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Weekly Dig. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, for those new th to the Weekly Dig, this is where we analyze classic anime uh, and look at uh, new anime as well. Um, uh, my name is Brent. These are my fantabulous co-hosts, John. Bonbonwa, Mina. And Steve. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And uh, let's get started with our dig tonight with a short, fun thing. Um, I think that's my cover picture. That's, that's a very true, <laughs> a true thing. Uh, mm. Noisman Sound Insect, which you can yes. see up there. Um, a 15-ish minute um, anime movie, kind of, sort of. Um, it is, uh, so the, the progenitor of this is kind of interesting. It's by Studio 4C, directed by Koji Morimoto, who was a director on Macross Plus, or like an animation director on Macross Plus. Um, he, um, probably got his, he was an animator on, on Akira. Um, he worked on the Animatrix, was a key animator on Kiki's Delivery Service, City Hunter, Mystic North Star, co-founder of Studio 4C. Um, for those who've seen Robot Carnival... Um, he did the segment Franken's Gears, which is pretty <laughs> clearly kind of the inspiration for Noisman Sound Insect in, in, in mm. terms of like the, the basic concept. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, uh, yes, and so he, he's worked with a bunch of different stuff. Um, he worked on the concert scenes in Macross Plus, uh, with a bunch of other uh, things. But it should also be pointed out. Um, this is done by Studio 4C with Masaki Yuasa as a primary collaborator. So doing the character design and so forth. So it kind of has that Masaki Yuasa flatness, weirdness to it in some ways. Um, and, of course, it should be pointed out, music by none other than Yoko Kano. Hey. Exactly. Um, John asked in the chat, are those Beats by Dre, Steve? Are, are, you, are you a Beats by Dre? Headphone wearer. Uh, no, these are very, um, very cheap headphones. Okay. headphones. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. They're, they're boinks by, by, uh, draw. There they're just knock off, knock off. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, so I don't know that explaining the plot of Noisman Sound Insect is very helpful. <laughs> um, I will say, in looking up the reviews on this, it was interesting seeing the split. Like, there were some people who were like, this is a really fascinating, you know, high-intensity, thought-provoking short film. Other folks who were like, I don't know what the F I just saw. Um, <laughs> and there were a lot of folks who were just like, essentially, this went faster than I could understand it, and it's clearly their problem. And so I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10, basically. Uh, which was a little disappointing. Um... Because it is definitely a fast-paced story about mm -hmm. this creature who's essentially um, um, separating people from their sound and in, in this kind of weird, fantastical way and kind of a resistance against that. Um, and in some ways, it's very much a simple, you know, this despot has basically taken over and so we're fighting back kind of story. Um, but one way I describe it to some people is it's kind of like they... They had this weird idea for an anime movie, and they um, cut out all the boring parts. Yeah. Um, so it's like, here's yeah. just kind of enough to let you know what's going on, and that's it, and credits. Right. Um, but it's a very interesting kind of kind of odd kind of a film. Um, what were your guys' kind of reactions watching it? I thought I had not seen this, mm. and I have. Mm. And so when I, I started watching it, I was just like, okay, this is vaguely familiar. And then once the action started going, I was just like, oh, yeah, where did I see this? Was this on sci-fi a long time ago? Was this on Adult Swim? I, I, I haven't pinned it down. Yeah. But, like, I was just like, yes, I know this character. I know what's going to happen next. And that's, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, <clears throat> and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I took this for what it was and, and, and it was just kind of like 
you know, when you see something like an anime going on for 14 minutes, what you need to understand, or any animation yeah. that goes on for just 14 minutes, and that's all you're going to get, you have to understand that, you know, basically what you're what you're looking at is somebody flexing, and yes. or somebody yes. flexing, <laughs> yeah, because because this is this is a mm. lot of flex here. Oh, I mean, yeah. Shinjiro Watanabe was is involved with this. Yoko mm. Kano is involved with this. All these different people are involved with this thing, this 14 minute thing. It's just like literally like they almost like bumped into each other into like the local 7-Eleven and said, hey, why don't we do this thing? Okay, let's do the thing. And they knocked it out in a weekend or something. <laughs> are you free but, on uh, Tuesday? Let's do it. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and but one of the things about this that is, that is really nice is that I, I think you gave a really good explanation that this is a movie about the boring parks and that you don't, there's enough there that you know what's going on that you're following the action. And that's what's important. This is all about movement, sound, and you yeah. get a little bit of whatever. And <clears throat> this is not meant to be thought-provoking in terms no. of lay, right? Right, yeah, uh, yeah. There's, 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 right, okay. This is supposed to be something of just like, look at this art, look at the movement, look at the, the, the characterization, which is very, when was this movie made? 97, I think. 97, I was gonna say, this is 90s animation. Mm -hmm. um, and just the music that goes along with it. I mean, it's there, there's no let up in this no. thing. Yeah. You know, so you're just like, well, so it's like I was watching it. You know, I was playing Genshin, so it was 4 a.m. by the time I got around to it. Um, so I'm watching it at 4 a.m. And by the end of it, I was like, I can't sleep now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because it was just a boom, 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 boom. But it was, it was, to me, it's just definitely a flex. I mean, there's just so much going on in here that is wonderful, interesting, and it just seems like almost here's our idea. Maybe somebody somewhere in the future might run with this as something else. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of potential in there. There's a lot of world building that's not talked about that's in there that you can pick up pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. So I just I just I feel like this could be something in the future and this is kinda like the pilot episode, so mm -hmm. to speak. Well, it is the future, Steve. It's 1997 to now, so I'm not <laughs> sure whether they're ever going to get around to picking that up. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Who can tell? Hollywood has a way of regurgitating things, so mm -hmm. you never know what might get recycled. Uh, I think the first time I ran across this, Brent, was when you showed it to Phil and I at mm -hmm. Star City. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you want to see something weird? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. <laughs> and, you know, seeing it now the second time around, I had forgotten about it, like, just until you were like, oh, Noisman. I'm like, Noisman, Noisman. Same kind of thing like Steve. Like, I just, that's, that seems really familiar. As soon as I started watching, I'm like, oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So it allowed me to, like, really dial in more to the art that was going on and, like, how the music was 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 uh, interlaced into the, the action that was going on. Um, yeah, I mean, there's – you could have bogged this down with a lot of what's the underground – organization doing you know what is the noise fruit versus the not the husk pieces <laughs> mm -hmm. you know that they're sorting out but you really don't need that for the action that they're shooting this for mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like they're, they're just going with it and like a <clears throat> stream of consciousness kind of thing it's like mm -hmm. no stopping no slowing down just all the way hammer down go yeah. well it feels like um if they wanted to explain any of this in this movie um it would have it would have been um Okay, professor, explain to us what this what this food is. Well, as you know, Bob, you know when right. you eat this food, whatever. It's like oh, okay, okay, we got to do this thing. Um, and yes, it would explain it to the audience more clearly. But just having somebody pluck it out and put it in, or seeing you know the juice yeah. going into somebody's mouth and them going, you know, okay, I, I know what that's doing now. Um, right. And it's it's also funny because the movie doesn't move at a breakneck speed the entire time. Um, there are some some shots where they're just kind of holding on something, kind of letting you watch something unfold. Um, something I, I hadn't remembered re-watching all this stuff. Um, thank you very much, Rockman. Appreciate that very much. Um, but uh, you, you are awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird how Noisman is um, just this very condensed experience. Um, it feels like, I don't know, a... Uh, um, an energy drink in anime form. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what you're talking about, the slowing down, is when he, uh, protagonist, mm. loses his sound. 
Yeah, she'll be up. And right. and protagonist Chan has that, and he is like halfway sort of through the plank of his sound mm-hmm. and struggling with it and kind of morphing around and kind of gelatinous, and she's just kind of like, uh, 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 uh. it's like, yes, it's contemplative of that moment mm-hmm. of like this is something weird is really happening, and how do you you know how do you deal with that? Yeah. But it's like those are well placed yeah but again to your point like you you know you don't have somebody plucking this out and explaining what's going on it's like no you slowed down just long enough for this thing to be like oh okay so you can like have your sound back yeah and then off we go (laughs) you know it's like oh neat so it's reversible it's 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 almost like the teacher going okay kids you got it you got it okay good good go ride 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 ride." (laughs) yeah absolutely um, um, and it, and it, it should be pointed out too like there are moments when they're like okay let's go and defeat Noise Man and then we cut to them captured yeah you know, right. none of the yeah. intervening chase or whatever like you know it would have been nice to see that but no we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna kind of do it and I think also like to your guys points I think because the story is so relatively simple it kind of benefits from this where it's like okay here's protagonist Kuhn here's protagonist Chan <laughs> He needs to be rescued. She's got the thing. She's running. You know, all of that kind of stuff. It kind of um, communicates well enough in the story without needing a lot of explanation. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting, kind of the overall just kind of art style of this. Um, how it doesn't have a lot of vibrant colors. Uh, you'd think for something this fast paced, you'd want something more <laughs> vibrant so you can kind of see a blue pop or a red or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they keep it very. Um, um, toned down which I think also kind of contributes a bit to the kind of visual chaos going on because your your eye can't pull things out quite as quickly um, so I think it works um, it's kind of um, unusual um, well, there's one there's one point where they're the, the flying vacuums yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah. like scooting around through different space mm-hmm. and you're looking down like this really well rendered sort of oh, like look amazing. into yeah like it's not a tunnel but it, it functions as a tunnel because of the way the structures of everything is built and you're looking down into the space and it's well rendered it's really it pops to the eye except for the fact that it's no popping color yeah mm-hmm. so that it's like this really it still is really done in a way that you're paying attention to it but it's also done in a way that you're like wow this is just so it's kind of a sort of a flat color thing going on here. I'm like, I'm amazed that at the same time, like, okay, I can see where you're you're delivering this drabness of the world without sound. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I gotcha, mm-hmm. I gotcha. Without without people's sounds enlivening their experience. I get this. Okay. And I Steve, I think you um, I completely agree with you. I think to your point about this being a flex, I think that's also the color scheme is also partly a flex because they're saying we're not gonna rely on color to draw your eye. Yeah. You have to mm-hmm. look at all the animation and pay attention to all the amazing things we're doing with the animation here. Um, that said, it, I mean, it should be pointed out, the uh, the character animation is not super consistent. Um, it's very Studio 4C, where it's like, sometimes characters are just kind of a little blobby. <laughs> um, <laughs> and not just because they're being turned into weird little floating polyps. Um but uh, yeah, exactly. Just saturated palette, um, and um, so that that is a little odd. Where sometimes folks are just kind of um, it's just they have heavily stylized. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it's something this short. Like it just it, you just go right past it. Right. Um, she also pointed out uh, Tobio, the name of the main character, um, was also the name of uh, uh, the boy that Astro Boy replaced, basically. That is the son oh. of Dr. Tenma, who died in the hmm. car accident. Oh, right. Yeah, so it's a bit of a callback, possibly, to original Astro Boy. Um, oh, interesting. Don't know, okay. but kind of interesting. Uh, Lena, I think, is the name of the, the girl. I don't know what that may refer to. Uh, Lane. No, <laughs> oh, there we go. Serial experience Lane. Oh, no. Absolutely. No, no. no. We're all connected. No. Exactly. It's all through the wire. <laughs> Um, what if Lena is a, is a reflection ah, of Lane ah, ah, ah. in this other world? This is actually the Wired, and oh. Lena is actually, and so Noisman is actually Doctor Airy, 
who is pulling no, out the not what that is. <laughs> the thing is i mean that's all reasonable <laughs> like, the, the scary part about it it's like oh that could be damn oh dear um but yes um uh just uh, uh point out um the music the music is very weird in this um it's it's very electronic it's very discordant um mm -hmm. in concert with a society where noise is being under attack basically yeah. Um, but like even like the, the the there's this beautiful chorus that like the the, the, the floating polyp ghost things um, sing, and even that is kind of off key. Um, it's it's haunting in the full sense of that word. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they 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 chose to not make kind of a classic orchestral kind of a soundtrack to this. It's more right. just kind of weird beats and so forth. Well, to your point earlier about the, the character modeling being kind of like shifty, mm -hmm. um, you know, with having a, as a discordant music style, it wouldn't shock me if so. If you, you had said, oh, you know, in the background notes to this, the character modeling is entirely intentional. It's because yeah. they don't want you to be focused specifically mm -hmm. on the details of any particular character or the idea is to focus on the general what's going on that you identify with the two protagonists but other than that you don't really need to be locked into how they look mm -hmm. you just need to be locked into what they're doing and what's yeah. what their emotional state is i was like i could believe that if that was the case because i would have thought an angelic choir of ghost sealed babies would have been more angelic but it it fits entirely yeah. the the odd concept of this entire piece exactly um i mean you know this is the studio that made mind game yeah <laughs> so it's there you go very much in that in that style totally um, well i i thought i thought of the music as as intentionally um discordant and mm -hmm. and in so in so far just to just to show that that the whole that the lack of sound that is now created mm. here, you know, this thing is making a, a, a lack of sound because it doesn't like it. It thinks it thinks it's bad. When there is sound, when there are people, and the the chase is on, it's deconstructed. Mm. Um, so the music is going to be de deconstructed because how would these people know what that is? And True. so you know, it, no, so you know, it's just kind of one of those things where it's just like. So kind of what you guys are saying is that this, the, the music is attached to movement. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's what, that's where I put it to. Uh, so cool. like when you're watching various characters, yeah. you're not getting that. You're not getting a theme. You're just kind of getting the, here's this thing that you're looking at and here's the sound we're going to put behind it because it's right. very chaotic and here you go. Have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, hope you're not tripping. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. A visceral sound experience versus like or, or, or an orchestral background right. to action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there's not going to be any to buy a Tobio 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 theme. There's mm -hmm. no Tobio. You know, there's no monster theme. There's no yeah. you know, none of that. It's just. I remember somebody uh, writing something saying that one of the downsides of John Williams' Star Wars soundtrack is that it has become so iconic. That, that kind of becomes the default way that everyone approaches music in any sort of you know film, TV, animation, whatever, and that really restricts you know musical choices. Or it's like every time mm -hmm. have a theme that we restate, every time things happen, it's like, well, no, not all the time. Like sometimes it makes sense to to be more experimental, be more weird, and to uh, to go kind of outside the lines a little bit. Um, I think this this definitely does that very effectively. Um, Cool. Um, any other thoughts on Noise Been Sound Inside? When you watch The Diary of Anne Frank, this was a very good palette. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I would have thought Baby no. Ghost would have been a better palette cleanser, but this definitely <laughs> was was a clean slate from uh, from Anne Frank, for, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it, it was fun. It, it it's mm -hmm. just a it's just a fun thing. Take it take it as it is and, and just have fun with it. Yeah. 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 
it reminds me very vaguely of like liquid television kind of Ooh. content. Yes. Yeah. You know what yes. I mean? It's like yeah. it would have been a great candidate for liquid television. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's just got that frenetic, mm-hmm. you know, pulsing mm-hmm. mania to it. Yeah. No, I, that may have that been may where have been, I saw yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Really? Actually, come to think of it, that may have been where I saw it. I'll have to, I'll have to well, look at that. Yeah. Because that, that actually takes makes total complete sense mm-hmm. that it yeah. would be on there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would. Yeah. <laughs> like Jan Fox, uh, John Ryan. Yep. Yeah, 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 very, very much in yep. that, that mode. And it could well be that one of the kind of audience, potential audiences for this, one of the reasons why it's a weird 60 minute thing is it's like there are markets like MTV out there, you know, and there yeah. are markets like that out there that will that will take this and and make it work for us. Okay. And in the 90s, MTV was looking mm-hmm. for stuff, mm-hmm. content like that to throw in. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Um, cool. Yeah, that is Noisman Sound Insect. Um, it is available. <laughs> there, there are places you can find it. Noisman Sound Insect if you want to you watch it. Um, it's out there. A really interesting, just kind of uh, weird um, back catalog kind of a work from Studio 4C in their early days. Uh, it's kind of really interesting to see. Cool. That will do it for that. We'll be back in just a minute to talk about the latest anime news. Uh, And uh, we will see you right then. So give us just a minute.